Good afternoon, I'm dodging the showers. I've come down just to three or four miles on past Bangor and I'm at Groomsport. And Groomsport, what do you hear this? This is quite funny. Groomsport, they believe it's named uh, or named after the port of the gloomy servant. I think that is fantastic. The port of the gloomy servant. And there's a wee turnery out here in the natural harbour. A couple of cargo vessels, big cargo vessels at that. Out here too. So welcome to the port of the gloomy servant. And I'm doing a sort of 180. Not too sure. Is that the Copeland's out there? Might be. Too sure what the end is, and I don't think that's the Copeland's. And it's a, a quite a wee backwater of a place, a wee sort of dormitory town, commuter town. Well, it's not even a town, it's a village. Uh, 2011 census, 3,011 people or so were listed as living in Grimsport. And it's nice on a summer's day now. It's nice, nice this morning. And there's an, I'm standing on a, on a sort of a commemoration, I don't know, flak, raised plaque here. And it's, uh, if you can read that, it's uh, commemorating the arrival of Field Marshal Fre Frederick, the Duke of Schomburg, KG, landed at Grimsport, August 13th, 1689. On his march from Groomsport to Carrickfergus, which he captured, and where in the following year he joined forces with King William III, Prince of Orange, and fell gloriously at the Battle of the Boyne, fighting in defence of the Protestant faith. There you go. Uh, King William III. Clued, whatever that is. So that's interesting. Claim to fame of uh, Groomsport. I'm going to take a wee uh, Jeff Duke round the place and see what I can see. War Memorial to a uh, man from this locality who fell at the First World War, in the First World War and Second World War. A lot of boys sacrificed, give their lives for the freedoms that we now enjoy. And there's been a presence um, at Groomsport since the, uh, it can be dated back to the 9th and 10th centuries. It's a natural sheltered harbour between Ballymore Point and Cockle Island and the people here had a hard life. It was subsistence agriculture and fishing and loom weaving. And along with the more important Donegal D uh, port, Groomsport sent out um, people who wanted to emigrate to the New World. And the most significant uh, departure from Groomsport was the Eagle Wing, and here it's commemorated in uh, uh, an educational board here. And 140 men, women and children set off in 1636, but they were, they were beaten back by, by uh, terrible seas, terrible conditions, and they returned. And in 1865, a railway, the railway arrived 
in Groomsport and uh, it sort of uh, gave it a revival but the railway was shut down, closed in uh, 1950 unfortunately. So Groomsport is basically a wee tourist village in the summer and, and uh, morning and uh, wee dormitory town. And this is interesting because I've never seen guys from the Merchant Navy being commemorated. I think this is, I think this is the second, this is the second World War um, War Memorial. And the wee town council here has tried to make an effort. That's pretty good. Has to be said, tennis courts and stuff. Bird life of Groomsport. Oyster catchers. Well, I'll run along the top. This is this is pretty good. And there's a purple sandpaper. I I get all these these birds mixed up. Anything small and grey at the shore side, very difficult. Now I know we're in plover, because it's distinctive. And the turns are very distinctive with the, the, the sharp head. So there's a sandwich turn that's listed here. The, the arctic turn isn't on this. There you go. A lot of boats. So these boats are all uh, locally owned. I would imagine. And I wouldn't, I suspect most of the guys wouldn't, wouldn't go too far. Maybe I'm wrong. There we go. Beyond there, you can see uh, caravan sites, but I'm coming down to this uh, whitewashed row here. This is Cockle Row, and these are the most significant historic uh, buildings in the whole of Groomsport, and probably along, and probably most significant historically along this whole uh, coastline and this section here is thatched. These are these are old fishermen's cottages. And they were gonna be knocked down but people from the community uh, stepped in and saved these so we could enjoy them today and we could know what life was like um, back then so this is Cockle Row Cottages and uh, somebody's a wee bit hopeful there with the deck chairs out And there's a notice board. There's all, there's good, it's great to see notice boards about the place. The history of Cockle Row. Last reminder of traditional Grimsport. So if you want to step back in time, you come and see Cockle Row. Could be as much as 350 years old. Sign of great age is the fact that they are built at right angles to the sea for shelter, so they didn't face the sea because they would have got the the whole wind and the waves in their face. So they were built at right angles to the sea. Legend had it that there was a blacksmith's forge at this site at the time, and we have already videoed uh, the Marshall Schomburg landing site just round a wee bit. 
colleges were inhabited until the 1950s and the 1960s were only saved from demolition by Bangor Art Club. Good on Bangor Art Club. <laughs> we did work of them and they're open to the public during the summer and at other times by special arrangement. The remainder of Groomsport's traditional cottages disappeared including a row leading down to the former Coast Guard Watch House, the white building at Bally McCormick Point, which I presume is, is that up there. I don't know. 1997, an expiry of the last lease of the art club, not the exp expiry of the oh boy, so, uh, the council were awarded a U EU grant for entirely renovating the colleges, which had never had electricity. I reopened that summer. One is a heritage college showing a bygone life, and the other is a modern tourist information centre. And there, there's uh, Grimsport as it was. And this is Tilly Barnes, one of the cottage's inhabitants. There we go. And this is the, the wee green area. And Grimsport. Cockle Row. And I think that this dates from at least 350 years ago. Probably one of the oldest surviving buildings of this kind in Ulster. What does that make it? The mid 1600s? I think so. In and around that. And I'm just coming up out of the green. And there's a, an old representation of a boat. And is this the eagle's wing? I suspect that it is. Oh. oh, look at this. What the dickens is this? Is, this, is it a skateboard for Finn McCool? I don't know. What do we see? Oh dear, it's Thomas Ronald Irvine. Sculptor. Sculpture by Thomas Ronald Irvine, born Newton Ards, 1930. And this is called Aspect One, July 1972. And I don't know what you think of that, but there you go. There's the wee boat. Let's go up and have a look. There we are, Eagle Wing. Oh dear, I'm trying to claim this. There's the Smuggler's Cove beer garden. Well, this is where we are. And I'm standing in front of Groomsport Presbyterian Church. And this is a miracle. Because, because it says that the church is open today. Now, normally Presbyterian, Methodist, Edom churches are shut during the week. But this one is open. This is a, this is Grimsport Presbyterian and it's open today and uh, the minister is Reverend Paul Dalzell. So I wonder could I dander and be still and know that I am God and you can you can maybe dander about this. Let us see. I wonder when this church dates from. It's a nice uh, 
It's an interesting piece of architecture at the doorway, above the doorway. There's the date up there. There's, there we are. A bit of history here. 1863. I'm just making my way up the the main and only street here. Everything uh, reflecting the association to the sea, connection to the sea. There's the stables. If you want to buy tea, the stables is the place to go. And there's the parish church on up here. This wee uh, bed of wild, wildflowers there. Excellent job. Look at this. Isn't this fabulous? Groom's Port in bloom. Can you see the nests of solitary bees have made in the bamboo canes and holes in the wood? It's a nest site for, for insects. And there, there's a, a few hardy ladies going for a swim. I'm not uh, put the camera on them any longer because uh, I might be accused of being a stalker. So I'm out the other end of Groomsport I'm coming past the stables where we have had many a, a big tight and pe people have made a, a, a great effort here. You know. Approaching the parish church. And this, this church here dates from 1842. Reverend Duncan Pollock. And I'm wondering is it open? Don't know. I suspect it'll be locked. And I'm coming down one of the walkways onto the beach. And that's that's the Copeland Islands out there. Nice wee walkway.
That's a gunnet out there. He's gonna dive. Where is he? Gunnet. Anyway. Here we go. Again, I'm making my way back to my motorbike just by this wee coastal walk and there's a car park here. And uh, people in Groomsport and Ards <coughs> and North Down Borough Council have to be commended for providing <coughs> things like this here. You've got a litter picker and you've got bags and uh, good for the council trying to keep the place well and anybody who avails of that. Great stuff. Good job. An old anchor sighted here. It looks quite a, an aged one. Sighted in front of the old boathouse. And they're saying, I wonder where the, when that anchor dates from and what boat it was off. So this is the original boathouse building. I don't know what date it dates from though. So I'm going to take a, a wee dander out onto the pier. And the local boat club are using this building. And it's obviously been added to and all the rest of it. But there's a, ah, there's, there's a date up there. Eighteen. I think it might be 1884. Groomsport and got a Groomsport in bloom gold standard from the Royal Horticulture Society. Not good. People, people, uh, people are proud of the, the village here at Groomsport. Super job.